Hello and welcome to another Morales Minute. These are quick tips and sage advice to level up your Web3 game development. Hi, my name's Sam. I'm a Unity certified developer at Morales. I have over 20 years of game dev experience and more than 10 years experience as a digital nomad. I love spending time in nature and practicing sports, as well as drawing, painting, and making music. Together, we'll learn more about the Unity Editor. Unity's flexible development platform offers incredible possibilities for real-time solutions, including games. Improve the quality and efficiency of your projects with these quick tips. Let's talk about the menu item attribute. This allows you to add Unity Editor menus either in the top menu or in context-sensitive right-click menus throughout the editor experience. By adding the menu item attribute before a static method, you can have Unity show in the top menu items a custom menu. And that same search result shows up in Unity's search menu, giving your users more ways to interact with your functionality. The Morales Unity example project is a suite of Unity scenes, each showing off different features. I'm going to show one particular scene here that helps talk about menu item and how it can be used. Learn more about the Morales Web3 Unity SDK by clicking the link above. So that you can see my screen better in the next section, I'll lower my opacity a bit. Let's take a look at a few web pages here. First, this is the project itself. You can download this project and follow along. Here's Unity's documentation for the menu item. You can see a bit more about how to use it and examples as well. And an optional additional feature that I'll show is the execute menu item. This allows you to use C Sharp to call directly to the menu item, giving you one more way to offer this content to your users. Here we are inside Unity, inside the examples project. I've got the readme opened up and I've already gone through those steps. Let's take a look at the scene. I'll open up the examples. And here's our menu item example itself. I'll give the scene a run. The functionality we're talking about here is for the Unity editor itself, not for the runtime experience. So I've created a runtime scene that has a button using the execute menu item functionality. But the core way for us to interact with this as developers is through the top menu item. So let's explore a few of these things now. Here in the running scene, I can click execute menu item. And when I do, the authentication kit is added to the running scene. I'll stop the scene now. If I explore the top menu item here, under Tools, we can see the menu option here to add the authentication kit to our scene. I'm just using this as one example of something you might want to do. Currently, to use the existing authentication kit, the user needs to drag from the project window into their scene hierarchy. There's no problems with this, but let's say you wanted to automate that. I'll just use that as a simple example for us here. By clicking this menu item, we mimic that drag and drop behavior. You can use menu items for absolutely anything in the Unity editor that you could script with C Sharp, and also some things that you could do as user gestures. So I'll click this here and we'll see that the authentication kit gets added to the scene hierarchy. There it is, it's now in our scene. So you can imagine if this was part of your game team's tool set, you would be able to more easily do this piece of functionality from the menu item. Also, if we look again at the menu item, we can see next to it, there's a hotkey. So we're able to optionally add Shift, Control, Alt, and A as a shortcut here. You can use any combination of letters that you like. I chose to use quite a few there just to explore the options. If I hit those hotkeys, Without this being selected, Control-Alt-Shift-A, I get the authentication kit added to the scene. So you have two ways to add it there. Now if I explore that menu option one more time, we see that it's grayed out. Now why is that? Because we can choose as developers when we want to have an option enabled and not. Here I've read in custom logic that says, if the authentication kit is already in the scene, don't allow the user to add another one. 
This is a real world example here of something you might actually want. Now let's open up the code for this scene. Here we are in the example menu item script. Let's take a look at the syntax for the example. So the menu item is an attribute. That means you start with square bracket and end with square bracket. In it, you can optionally pass parameters. There's lots of different attributes inside Unity. This one, of course, sets that menu item that we saw previously. The first thing that you pass in is the menu item path. This is both where it will show up in the nested menu structure and what the final button name title is. Then you give it a menu priority. The higher the number, the lower it will be in the vertical list. There's some other subtleties to that, so check out the documentation. The second parameter here is, is this a validation function? So notice that I have one menu item declared here, and then I have a second version with the exact same parameters, except the second one has is validation set to true. The difference here is this must return a bool value that decides, is this an enabled option at this moment? So the code that I've used here, which is relevant for this real world example, is does the scene already have the authentication kit in it? If it does already have it in it, then I do not allow the option to be clicked. Otherwise it returns true and you can click the option. Let's look at the code that I do inside here. Now you can do anything that you want from a C-sharp perspective. I'll step through the unique code here. Now note that what I'm going over here is not about menu item per se, it's about how I would dynamically add a prefab to the scene, but it's also quite interesting. The first thing I do is this method embraces the Unity's undo feature. This means that you can use the file menu at the top and the edit menu and go to undo and be able to back out and re-step forward through the history. This is an optional best practice that allows you as a development team to have a more robust feature set for yourselves. So here, if I wanted to do this operation and then step back, I can do that. The next thing I do is look up the authentication prefab. There's different ways that you could search for this in your project, but here I use the GUID value and you can get that GUID value as shown. Then I load the prefab itself. I move the prefab into the active scene hierarchy. I update the undo objects. And as a courtesy here, if the user has selected something already in the scene, I will parent the authentication kit under that. Probably for the authentication kit, you would want it sitting at the root, but I just wanted to show off this as optional functionality for you since it might be something you wanna do with other workflows. Next again, an optional courtesy, I select the new authentication kit prefab in the scene. This highlights the user's attention that this menu item has functioned, and they may actually want to click into it and do something at this stage. And finally, I close out the undo operation. That's it. Now, typically you don't do the following, but if you also want this menu item functionality to happen in C Sharp, either at edit time or runtime, you can call that with execute menu item as you see here. Here in this scene, when you click the UI button at runtime, it calls this functionality. So it's just one more way that you can offer this type of functionality to your users. Back in Unity, let's take a look at the functionality one more time and see how that undo operation works. Here I'll click the menu item. We see that it's both added to the scene and selected because the inspector on the right shows more information. And notice under the edit menu where the undo operations are, you'll always see the latest undoable operations. Not everything in Unity, and certainly not everything that you do in custom code is going to be undoable. But because I've incorporated that into the workflow, I can easily click undo add authentication kit. That's the custom name I gave it at the end of the method. When I do that, it will undo this step. And there we go. It saves me from needing to manually click and delete it. You can imagine much more complex operations possible in the menu item, and using the undo is a nice way to be able to step your way back through all of that or some of that functionality. That's everything inside Unity. Level up your Web3 development skills by building weekend projects. Sign up at moralis.io projects.
Visit docs.morales.io to download and get started. Thanks.